Hello, and welcome to the Songwriters Workshop. This is the series where I attempt to write songs based on the process and techniques of famous songwriters. Each video looks at a different songwriter's writing habits, musical inspirations, and creative process, while also including an original song written using those techniques. So let's take a look at our next songwriter. This video will look at songwriter Tom Waits. You came to the right place, baby. Step into my office. Tom was born in California in 1949 and grew up in the San Diego area. He had an early fascination with R&B, soul, and folk music, as well as the Beat Generation writers, in particular Jack Kerouac. By the early 70s, Tom was playing his own songs at clubs and cafes around LA, and drew the attention of David Geffen while playing at the Troubadour, who in turn introduced Frank Zappa's manager Herb Cohen to Tom's music. With Cohen as his manager, Tom would release his first album, Closing Time, in 1973. He would also tour with Zappa, often unsuccessfully, and begin to grow a cult following around his unique style as he continued to release albums. Tom's albums throughout much of the 70s would feature his signature early sound of a combination of drums, bass, piano, and saxophone, along with Tom's famous gruff vocals, often interspersed with spoken word. By the late 70s, Tom would become interested in film and acting, eventually leading him to the set of Francis Ford Coppola's One From The Heart, for which Tom wrote the soundtrack. On set, he would meet his future wife, Kathleen Brennan, who would also become his writing partner. With Brennan, Tom would expand his musical vocabulary, as well as switch labels and fire Herb Cohen, and in 1983 he would release the album Swordfish Trombones, which is probably my favorite Tom Waits album. Swordfish trombones would begin Tom's fascination with unusual choices of instruments, containing things like glass harmonicas, bagpipes, and a freedom bell. Subsequent albums would feature things like a stroh violin, bowed saw, various types of synthesizers like the chamberlain, and a host of percussion instruments, from marimbas to African talking drums. Waits would continue to release albums, each one as surprising as the last, some of my favorites being Rain Dogs in 1985, Mule Variations in 1999, and Real Gone in 2004. He would also continue to act, appearing in movies like Bram Stoker's Dracula, Seven Psychopaths, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, and Mystery Men. Doctor, you are a genius. That's what the card says. The research for this video will come from Tom Waits on Tom Waits, a collection of interviews spanning Tom's career, edited by Paul Mayer Jr. Beyond music and film, Tom is known for his unique interviews, often asking journalists to meet him in remote diners and pubs, dishing out random facts and sage-like sayings, and preferring an entertaining lie to the boring truth. He said in an interview in 1999, the fact is that everyone who starts doing this, to a certain extent, develops some kind of a persona or image in order to survive. Otherwise, it's very dangerous out there. The whole thing is an act. Nobody would really show you who they are. Nobody would ever dare do that, and if they do, they change their mind after a while because it gets to a point where you don't know what's true anymore. The dice is throwing the man instead of the man throwing the dice. So I'm going to try and break down the persona that is Tom Waits the songwriter. Whether it turns out to be fact or fiction, I think there is something great to learn from Tom. And the fiction is usually more interesting anyway. I started by thinking about what I was going to write my song about. Over the years, many interviewers have asked Tom about where his ideas come from, and Tom had many answers. He said, It's a problem with writing songs. For me, it's just conceiving the idea for a song. Visualizing it in your head and then putting it down is nothing. It comes out real easy. Trying to come up with something, that's challenging for me. But from what I gather from his interviews, Tom is constantly capturing and collecting fragments and ideas that he will later turn into songs. One journalist noted, on the back of his inner office door was a bulletin board sporting various sized pieces of paper on which lyrics and song fragments were handwritten. Tom says, 
The problem is that all these things pass through you all the time, and when you sit down to write, it's really like purchasing a butterfly net. It's going on all the time. It's just that you're going to draw a frame around it now. You're going to reach up and grab some and swallow it. So I started trying some things out on the piano and collecting things throughout my daily life that I thought I could use in my song. I think it's about being aware of your surroundings and what you want to convey. As Tom says, you have to make yourself some kind of antenna for songs to come to you. You have to make yourself a kind of musical yourself. You have to be of music and have music in you. Some way for songs to continue to want to live in you, in or near you. You gotta be real quiet sometimes if you want to catch the big ones. Of course, what Tom experienced in his life and what is reflected in his work is unique. Tom's underground, as he calls it in his opening track for Swordfish Trombones, lended itself to his gruff and vivid songs. He said, In America, you have to control your diet very carefully. If you feed on things that are easy and accessible, that's what you put out yourself. The kind of exciting chemical explosions which take place when you're experimenting are much more likely to occur if you make mad choices. While I don't have the same background and experiences Tom had, I did try to imagine inhabiting his world. And Tom helped me with this with his songs, which paint a vivid picture of his world, as well as reading some of Tom's favorite authors, like Bukowski and Kerouac. But Tom has a warning about writing from disturbing viewpoints, saying, I think you can continue to write about certain things without staying overnight there. It all depends on how you handle it, I guess. The creative process is imagination, memories, nightmares, and dismantling certain aspects of this world and putting them back together in the dark. After working up some ideas on the piano, I decided to sit down and focus on the words. When asked the old question, which comes first, words or music, Tom said, Words are music. If you have words, you have sound, and the sounds have a shape to them. You don't have to wait for the words to have music, and sometimes you don't have to wait for the music to have words. To get started, I came up with my own writing exercise based on something Tom often repeated in interviews about what he enjoys in a song. He says, I like songs that have weather in them, and the names of towns and the names of people. Then you can get a fire going, maybe a bite to eat. It's all jewelry for the ears. So I decided to do a kind of word ladder. I wrote down in columns five examples of someone's name, the name of a town, a type of weather, and a kind of food. Then I wrote verses using the combinations of words from each column. Doing this exercise gave me some good insight into why Tom's lyrics are so effective. He uses specificity to create interest. Some songwriters use vague language in an attempt to be universal and avoid alienating an audience. However, you can get lost in the mist. Tom uses things like locations and names to anchor a listener and provide an atmosphere for them to latch onto. And knowing these things makes you care about the people in the song so much more. Using my exercise, I ended up writing a few stanzas that I used in my song, and that provided a clearer direction forward. Knowing what I wanted to write about, I also began writing more line fragments, playing around with the words. And I tried to focus on using words I hadn't used in songs before, since as Tom says, vocabulary is my main instrument. Moving my words to the piano, I began experimenting with sounds to help me get more words out. Tom says, I'm usually more concerned with how things sound than how they look on the page. Some people write for the page, and that's a whole other thing. I'm going for what it sounds like right away, so it may not even look good on the page. But I'm still a word guy. I'm drawn to people who use certain vernacular and communicate with words. Tom seems to utilize the gibberish lyric method that I've talked about with other songwriters, singing nonsense syllables until he finds a sound and melody he likes, then figuring out the words that seem to want to be written. He said, Most lyrics and songs just start with the sound, 
and somehow the meaning finds the sound and they join, and you get over it. And for Tom, this is an instinctual process, often likening it to children's ability to create music without in-depth knowledge of language. He said, I'm always making sounds for the sake of making sounds. Before you have words, you just make sounds. Nobody makes better songs than kids. Then we lose it. We're born knowing everything, and our whole life is a process of forgetting everything. As I was working out my lyrics with my piano part, I started to realize that Tom's methods and music were actually pushing me towards writing two different songs. One thing I admire about Tom's music is that he can write gritty, angular songs like Underground or Hell Broke Loose that show off his gruff and bombastic side, but is equally at home with honest, heartfelt ballads like Tom Trobert's Blues or Time, showing his gentler side. And listening to Tom's music as I was researching him led me to write from both of these perspectives, and my lyrics also seemed pulled one way or the other. So for the first time in these videos, I ended up writing two songs based on one songwriter. While it's not my intention to try and directly imitate the artists I cover, inevitably what I write will be inspired by them. And this is something Tom talked about with his music. He says, Anything you absorb, you will ultimately secrete. It's inevitable. Most of us are original paintings, and it's a mystery as to what is learned and what is borrowed, what is stolen and what is born, what you came in with and what you found while you were here. So while these songs are inspired by the artist's style, I am also developing my own voice and molding it together into something unique. Looking more into the music side of Tom's writing, he is able to admit that he is a writer, not an experienced musician, which is actually beneficial to his writing process. He says, Writing on an instrument is different than being a real master of an instrument. It's more of a process of investigation than anything else. So you may be lacking in technique, but high on the investigation scale. However, this doesn't mean he is not skilled at playing and writing on instruments. For Tom, a certain amount of knowledge is beneficial for breaking out of a musical routine. He says, There's a certain kind of musical dexterity that you can arrive at that actually punishes a certain point in your development, or moves past it. It happens all the time with me. The three chord syndrome. So the right combination of experience and investigation helps to create interesting music. After feeling I had a grasp on my songs, musically and lyrically, I started working toward crafting my demos. The craft of songwriting is immediately apparent in Tom's songs, and something that is important to him. He says, It's craft by all means. You can tell it's craft when you hold two songwriters up side by side. One who's good and one who isn't. You can tell who is craftier, I guess. And for Tom, it's a matter of building a song, piece by piece reacting to what the song is telling you. He says, That's what you're doing in a song. You're listening and thinking, what does it need? Some of what goes into a song building is almost a medical Frankenstein process. What does it need? It's very beautiful, but it has no heart. Or it has nothing but heart, but it needs a rib cage. Tom is forever crafting and building his music into something that portrays the honesty of his life, personality, and experiences. And his methods and outlook on the songwriting process make him truly unique. He says, Writing is valuable and important. I think it's what you do with it and where you take it, and how you get it to come off the page and into your forehead. I've always kind of been on the outside so I started doing this because I didn't fit. So you kind of don't want someone to tell you that you fit in over here, because that's why you started doing what you did before. The creative process remains, regardless of whether it's 1939 or 1979. It remains the same. Duke's down at the diner Seeing a shiner eating his bacon and eggs. Fox 
starts to roll over all of Jones
to me the same bright light that's always been Josephine. I hope you enjoyed the songs. I enjoyed making them. I think Tom's insights and unique perspective on songwriting led me to some interesting places, and I would be interested to see how other people use his techniques. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll see you at the next song.